what's going on youtube this is aj quillen and i've had this for a minute i this uh i don't really know how to pronounce it but i'm just gonna say it's the ninjutsu origin 1x and i've had this for a while and i haven't used it yet so but i've i wanted to try it that's why i have it because i thought it was pretty cool and the specs are pretty good as well too in the this box is going to be specifically like for people i think who pre-ordered it as well like when they first started selling the mouse so it's pretty cool it's pretty cool but you know i just wanted to see what the mouse is because i've used the like the classic intelli mouse and i've used the classic intelli mouse pro and it was a pretty big mouse i would say and you know, obviously it was on a heavier side you know but it wasn't too bad but it, it was really comfortable and that mouse specifically the weight was good i mean not the weight the um you know, the weight distribution was good. It was balanced and it felt really well, well built and stuff like that. You know, it was a solid mouse, but you know, me, I like, uh, light mice and I like smaller mice. I don't know what it is, but I do better with smaller mice and I actually find them to be pretty comfortable for the most part. They don't really cramp my hand that much, which is kind of weird, but it's just how it is. And I have pretty big hands. Can't tell. So. I don't know, but it just, I've tried a lot of different mice, but for me, smaller mice definitely work like the Razor Viper mini. Um, there's this one that I recently just got the Team Wolf Ultra. It's like the Cox CM 600 kind of that one works. And then like the, uh, the final mouse ultralight too. like all of those, I would say are like, like my best performing mice. But in like the hot yes, I would say as well, too. But bigger mice, they just don't I don't seem to do as good with. But they're still good mice nonetheless, you know, and I always want to give them a try. But they just don't ever really work, work out. But yeah, this is it right here. Pretty cool box. I just wish it was a better material. You can see like during the shipping, like it already has like it's kind of scuffed up, you know, so over time. You don't really protect it or anything like that. It's it'll definitely the box will mess up, but I mean it's pretty cool. I like the box, like little samurai guy. I don't know if you want to call it like the oni or something. I'll probably butcher that. It might be something else. I know he goes by a lot of different names. Okay, this is right here. This is like the receiver. Okay, so you can see the USB C. Wow, this mouse actually looks a lot bigger in person. And no, it's not what she said. This looks a lot bigger in person uh, than in the photos. And the photos, it looks kind of small, but it's actually pretty decent size compared to like the the Vaxi Zygon MP01S. I mean, they're pretty both like same size, I would say, kind of in a sense. This one is a little bit smaller, obviously, but I wasn't expecting it to be this this big. But I mean, off the rip, it doesn't seem too bad. Really clicky. Oh, really, really clicky. <laughs> okay, that's different. It's really clicky. Okay. So I think this is a, like, it's either an adapter or it's a, a receiver. But we got the little cable, the USB C. We got the quick start guide. Then the, this is the dongle. Okay, so you should be able to just plug the dongle in like this. Yeah, this is like the receiver kind of pretty much so you can just keep it right on your desk to try to get like the best performance out of it without many latency issues or anything like that it's understandable yeah okay and that came all the way off okay that's fine I'll deal with that later i'm almost positive that this mouse doesn't have any rgb i kind of just went with like the route of Focusing specifically on the weight, which I don't blame them for. Something they should do, honestly. Because RGB, it depends on the mouse, you know, when it comes to RGB. But RGB is definitely not a deal breaker for me. I don't, as long as the mouse is what I want it to be, like specs wise, like I could really care less if the mouse has RGB or not. It's just like a quick start guide right there. So that doesn't really matter. I'm pretty sure I already have it set up. So yeah, this is just like the 
an on and off switch. I like the, the coating on it. It's already like getting like the oils off my hands. But yeah, turn it on, little lights came on at the DPI. So usually 400, uh, it's like 400 DPI red. Oh, this is a little different. So 400 red, 800 is uh, purple, I guess. And then blue is 1,600. And probably the other colors, 3,200. But yeah, that's what it's seeming like. And the glide, I mean, the feet, I don't think they have anything on them. They're just already right off the bat. This isn't a fast pad, really. It's like a more of a control, especially since I'm in my room and it's hot and humid. So I don't think it really has like a Humidity doesn't affect this pad too much, but you know, obviously since it's really hot in here, it's not gonna have like the best glide, but it's not too bad considering this isn't a really a speed pad. It's more of a, like a really smooth, like control pad. But the, you know, the specs are pretty good though. The sensor is a Pixar, you know, uh, 3335. You know, I'm not really the biggest fan of 3335. But, you know, the companies, they claim, you know, like, oh, we did like optimizations, you know, on our own to make it better. But then, you know, I, I hear a lot of things about like DPI deviation and all this stuff. And then like people have issues with LOD and just all this other stuff, you know, and it's just like it kind of sucks. But, you know, that's like the one thing I would say, like if they could do better, in my opinion, the one thing is if it had a better sensor, you know. Cause like, you know, 3360 or better. That's, a, that's all I have to say. Cause 3360 is, that's just, it's good. That's good. Like it doesn't even have to be anything better than that. 3360 is more than good enough, but yeah. And then the dimensions is 121 lengthwise. I might butcher this cause can't tell which is which, but the height of the mouse is 58, I believe. And the width is 39. And it weighs around like 66 grams. I mean, which I would say is pretty somewhat accurate for most. It's pretty a lot. It's, it feels pretty light. It's well balanced too. It doesn't really like tip over. Sort of right in the middle. It doesn't go forward or backwards. So that's good. It feels light in hand. And it's just 2.4 gigahertz for the connection. Which is what most wireless mice use. And then it claims like a battery life of 48 hours. I don't know about that. You know, I'll probably have to put that to the test, depending on how much I like the mouse. But ergo mice don't really go too well with me. You know, I don't perform at my best. Very mediocre <laughs> majority of times. But we'll see. And then it says the report rate, you can change it in between 125, 500 and 1000. But um, how to do that exactly? I am not sure. I don't know if this has software. <laughs> uh, it might, but yeah, it, it claims that I guess you could change the report rate. And it has just like the white virgin PTFB feet, which, you know, they don't feel too bad. They feel good, nice and smooth, not scratchy or anything like that. And this is what's different. Now, I don't think I've used these switches before um, when it comes to clicks for a mouse. Cause I've, I've used Juanos. I don't know if they're like blues, but I've used Juanos switches now because of the, uh, this Vaxi MP zero one S. So those, I like those, those are nice, honestly. And this one, this mouse right here, the Ninjutsu uses the Kale, uh, GM 8.0. And I like the sound of them nice and clicky. And you know, you can click them pretty fast. I'm not the fastest clicker, but you know, Good clicks. I, I like them. They, the clicks just already, to me, they seem better than Omron's. And any of the Omron's for that. So that's that's good. And this says the LOD is one millimeter. Which is, you know, basically supposed to be just like one CD disc or less. So it should be like very low. But who knows if that's the actual case or not, or if that's just like they're advertising, but you know, there's not really much to say about this mouse, you know, I mean, it's pretty simple, but I'll test it out. 
you know i like how light it is though it feels really nice you know I, hopefully i perform pretty good with it considering this would i would say would be the lightest mouse that i've tried that's ergonomic i mean i've tried the ponage ultralight custom i think that's what it's called and that one i would do okay with two but honestly for that one in my opinion i feel like that one was more aggressive um on the shape but it might not have been honestly but that one was like the ec2 but i feel like that one was a little more aggressive but this one's a little more like you know it, it actually feels pretty good for fingertip grip honestly it fits perfectly like a glove but i'll just have to see you know see how it is because it, it seems super solid right now like even like the, the clicks like they don't i mean they can touch but they don't overlap with each other but they can like grind against each other depending on how you play with it but they don't really touch so that shouldn't really be an issue there's like very light steps to the scroll wheel <laughs> it's easy to press in too so that's good it's a, a, easy to actuate you don't have to put much tension down the side buttons pretty good i wouldn't say anything really bad about the side buttons they're pretty solid and then it's the USB-C as well, too, which is cool. But it's just like the, you know, this is really nice. I actually like, I, it feels like really light, you know, surprisingly. And I just hope that, it, you know, this will change my take on Ergo Mice. Because even this, this Vaxi, uh MP1 or <laughs> MP01S, these names that they use, is like, you know, I can tell that like it has some Ergo to it, you know. It's comfortable and you know i don't get any cramps with it and i perform pretty well with it but then at the same time too like you just could tell like it doesn't even compete to where if i was to use like some of my main my mains or my daily drivers it's just it's just not there so i mean that's why like everyone has their preferences and you really just have to like try out different mice to find out what really works for you because just because i have big hands you know doesn't mean I have to use a big mouse, but I'm kind of like going on about something different. <laughs> so we're going to leave it at that. But yeah, the review will be coming. Uh, we'll just have to see because I have a lot of different mice I have to test like four. And then I still have some coming in as well, too. So it really just depends on which one I like the most or which one I get around to. But I'll definitely be reviewing this one to see how it holds up and see you know if it's worth the price because it's around like this mouse you know it has good reviews but it's around like 80 dollars, so that's like pretty uh high up there especially considering that you know the wireless mice that they have now like the model o wireless um the razor orochi you know like those mice the super light the razor viper ultimate that's going on sale like every now and then you know and those have like better sensors you know than a 3335 and this is 80 dollars. so it's like is this price justifiable you know it's a unique shape like mo majority of the mice aren't in this shape you know in wireless and at this weight but then at the same time it's, it's an 80 dollar mouse and then you got to put the tax onto it and the shipping so it's just like is it really worth that price and then that's just you know it's, we're just gonna have to find that out and see build quality wise and everything because i mean i'm shaking it there's no rattles at all no rattles at all like you can, i'm shaking it right near you probably can't hear it at all but there's no rattles at all so and this is the mouse button one and two these are the side buttons And then the scroll wheel. But yeah, it's a solid mouse. And we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, you know, I'm pretty sure this is lighter than the Ponage in that sense. But 
but then the ponage i think as well too it really threw me off is that there was holes on the sides of the mouse and honestly i prefer mice that don't have holes on the side of the mouse just because it's just more comfortable it feels more natural but let's see oh not again we're doing more jump scares more jump scares let's see real quick what the ponage is so weight wise so i can know like because that one, I just, I couldn't, like, after a while, I was just like, oh, man, this and this one is $90. I was like, I don't know at the end of the day how it is. Okay, so if you go, like, with the wireless without the top shell, it's 65 grams. You go wireless honeycomb shell, 69 grams. So that's, like, literally already, like, six more grams than this mouse claims to be. And if you use a solid shell... 73 which is what I, I was using i was using like the solid white shell with that mouse so like for the most part like and i wouldn't use the, the ponage ultra like custom without the shell because it, it just was really awkward and uncomfortable but it claims to be 65 grams so you know this one is pretty light so it's not like a dramatic difference but it does feel, from what I can remember, it does feel more comfortable in the ponage for sure. And I don't know if that's just because the shape is somewhat different and there's not holes on the side, but it's definitely more comfortable. But this is the Ninjutsu Origin X1. And this was the first impressions and unboxing. And we'll see how this one turns out. And hopefully it's worth its price. Thanks for watching the video. If you made it this far, like the video, subscribe, leave comments down below with any feedback or any questions you want to know about the mouse. And I'll see if I can answer them. And thanks for watching. Peace.